Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, we're gonna see if we could recreate this beautiful glass render from Dan Zuko using Redshift, Cinema 4D, and Grayscale Gorilla Studio. Let's head on in and let's get started. So, as soon as I saw this render from Dan Zuko, he made to help us promote our new glass materials and glassware models that are now in Grace Gorilla Studio, I had to go see if I could make it. And I thought, uh, man, I've been busy. Let's see if I could just do something in a short amount of time. Can I really make a render like this in 10 minutes? So we're gonna see how close I could get. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Dan's original scene file he sent me and see how close we can get to it. And if you're like, look, I just wanna look at the scene file, you can actually go download it. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can click down below and get access to this and many more other scene files designed to help you learn and also give you a beautiful scene to put your next project in. All right, let's get going. Let's set the timer and let's see if we could recreate this thing. Let's set a 10 minute timer. Here we are. And I'm gonna hit start. And as soon as this thing beeps, I'm done rendering. All right, let's go. We are off to it. So uh, obviously these, uh, this render was created to help promote our uh, glass uh, materials and models. So let's just grab those right away. Inside of Grayscale Gorilla Studio, uh, I could either click on the glassware models or I could just type in glass. If I type in glass, I'm gonna get both these beautiful glass uh, materials and these models as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click on one of these and click on the glassware models just to go to that collection and try to quickly find this model. I think it's a fluted glass. Uh, might be able to just type fluted as well. It's right here. All right, and because we're connected to Cinema 40, I could just click this green button and it shows up right in our scene. I'm gonna delete our shader ball. By the way, I'm using our free scene file here. Uh, you can get this whether you're a member or not. This is a free scene file. I use it all the time to speed up things because that's what we're here to do here at Grace Gorilla. So I'm going to delete the shader ball. I'm going to zoom into our glass and uh, I'm going to grab our focus null and grab our uh, uh, place tool and just place our focus null right on the glass. Okay. So the glass models all come with liquid inside. So you could put, you know, beer, whiskey, or, you know, water, like a normal person, like right inside. Uh, I don't need that for this render. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and grab a, 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 a glass material just to go along with this so, so we could get started. So I'm going to type glass in again, and I'm going to go uh, just grab this one. So we have like frosted versions and clear versions of all of these. If you have it downloaded, you could just click on send and it's automatically going to send it right into your material and uh, you can just drag it onto your object. So let's just see what this gets us. Love that color. You know, I love this kind of orange stuff. All right but we need more. Uh, first, uh, let's go ahead and just duplicate this and try to recreate that scene. Now you can just hit back on studio or you could just go to this uh, new area where the uh, uh, image is. And we have a, a widescreen image we ha and we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these glasses. So first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and do 1920 by 1080. And this is uh, better. I think our camera might be fine. I'm using the 200 millimeter zoom um, that I use all the time for this kind of uh, really close up model work. I'm just gonna kind of frame this one glass here just so it's kind of close. And now I'm gonna grab our glass, which is right here, and I'm gonna grab our place tool, and I'm gonna use command on my keyboard to make duplicates. And all I'm doing is just adding these to the scene, and I'm kind of setting up the six glasses we need. We need three there, and then there's one kind of behind, so I'll just place it here for now. We might have to move this. Um, this one's kind of on top. Let's see if we could angle it, kind of get it right angled. Well, we might have to angle that up a little bit. And then there's one kind of sitting over here that also needs to be angled. Okay, so we have our six glasses. Uh, none of them are angled the right way, but from here, I could grab these and use our more traditional move tools. So I'm gonna use W, E, R, and T. W is gonna flip between uh, worldview and object, and that's gonna let me rotate and move things. Uh, and then I might hit E, that'll give us the, the move tool here. Uh, if I hit R, it's gonna let me rotate. So I could just go ahead and rotate this one a little bit closer, just like that. And then T, which lets me scale, which I won't use. But if you see my stuff move, that is what's happening. I'm just using my key commands to try to work fast. Um, and I'm also gonna move away from my camera just for now. 
to make sure all these things are roughly placed where I want them. Some of these got, got moved way far back. So let's move this one closer. Um, this one here needs, uh, this one's fine. It's maybe touching a little bit. No touching, you know the rules here, Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, let's angle this one more forward. This one, it, it needs to get rotated up to kind of match that angle. This one's more forward. Let's go ahead and grab this angle and yeah, that might be fine. We don't have to make it exact, especially we got 10 minutes and I'm sure I won't make it as pretty as Dan uh, can, but I'm gonna do my best. All right, something like that. Let's go back into our camera and see how we like our composition here. So I think I could, um, uh, first of all, move this over a little bit, just kind of get our composition a little bit um, more cleaned up. I don't like um, how much of the butt I'm seeing of this one, but might be running out of time, so we can always come back and clean it up. Okay, let's look at this composition. It's a little cluttered. I do like how these are kind of aiming at the center. Sometimes you do want lines kind of coming in and overlapping. This one I feel like needs to be moved a little more in front. And so this might need, we might need to cheat this one a little bit down. Okay, uh, Okay. Let's, let's lock the camera for now and talk about the materials. So let's go into our glass materials and you can see we have a ton of these here, um, frosted and clear and all these colors. Let's gr just grab some colors we like. Um, and I think I'm gonna stick with these more clear ones, but we do have like frosted versions of each of these. I like this kind of pink color. We already have this orangish one. Let's go uh, green. Um, let's download this purple as well. Let's upload that. And I'm just clicking send. You can see it show up over here in Cinema 4D. Um, let's go with lime. Let's give us some nice options here. We might, man, if you let me do it, it might just have too much orange. Um, let's get a clear one, because we did have um, like that clear one in the original. And now let's just go ahead and grab these and put them uh, directly on the glass. Um, you can see what happened. Okay, I dragged on this new material on the glass and it didn't update. What is that? Well, remember we made instances when we used our place tool if you ever bump into this, a good way to do this is just to put the um, texture, instead of on what got instanced, just put it right above it. And if there's no null there, just make a null. I think you could hold option and click null and it'll make a null and you just put the material there and then all the other ones will just essentially be waiting for a material. So now we have our orange on our original, clear here, and then let's keep just adding these to the other ones. We have lime, we have uh, lemonade, Lavender, let's go with, what is this, kelp? Color's kelp. Okay, this might be a little bit more neon than the original. Um, so I definitely don't love my color choices as much as Dan's. So we can go and actually just try to match it more. Um, we do have this kind of orange original uh, color, which I think is pretty close to um, uh, this one here. So let's go ahead and just recreate it. We got this more amber there. And then we got um, this kind of strawberry we can go find. We have another uh, yellow kind of one that we can move up. And I think this green is just too green. That's limeade. And I think limeade and lemonade might be just too um, saturated. I think it's a little bit more of a muted feel. So I'm just gonna go grab um, some more chill colors. You know, that's just a, been a problem with me as a designer for years. Um, I love those super saturated colors on their own. Like if I pick a t-shirt, you know? Um, but when it comes to making like a beautiful subtle render, sometimes those colors can really stand out a little too much. I'm certainly guilty of that. Okay, I, I'm liking these choices better. Uh, my least favorite one now is actually these two are the same. Um, and so let's go ahead and grab a more, another subtle one. This one's smoke is nice. And let's just replace this one. Uh, with smoke, which is gonna be up there, and remove, and beautiful. Okay, so let's see how much, oh wait, you have less than a minute. So let's talk about um, denoising. So I like our angle. I, I think we can mess around a little bit more with the, the lighting. Um, one thing I will do is switch this to more of a studio look just by grabbing texture, dragging it to drop zone, and instantly it'll grab one of my favorite HDRIs called Three Softbox. Uh, studio and I'm going to rotate this around and just try to get that nice bright image that Dan's original has might be a little too bright there 
I'm gonna tone this down and then we're gonna talk quickly because I'm running out of time uh, about, um, okay, I hate that reflection there. So I'm just gonna rotate it. That's, oh baby, that's better. Tone it down, looking good. Let's talk about all this noise. What's going on? Why why, why you have all this noise, Nick? Well, partly I'm on a Mac. Okay, well, you could, we could talk about that in another video. If you have questions about it, ask below. Uh, but right now I'm just gonna say, I've been using this noise uh, down here called, uh, uh, I call it Odin, but I'm realizing now it's called O-I-D-N. And it does this really nice noise. At first, it's like a little splotchy, but once it cleans up, it works really, really well with glass. So I did wanna show that because I have been playing a little bit with these glasses and found that, especially on some slower machines or, or um, if you're just like doing some look dev, this goes a long way, this OIDN. So I'm looking at the uh, uh, timer and I had literally have 30 seconds, guys. 20 seconds, holy crap. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Um, I'm gonna stop it here and just kind of keep this render because we're gonna like kind of look and contrast and compare at uh, Zuko's original scene file and see how close we got and also maybe pick up a few tips and tricks. Oh, there's intersecting, there's touching. We can't have that. Oh my gosh, oh gosh, okay. I think I moved them away. Whew, okay, let me stop the timer. Uh, 10 minutes, that goes fast. Um, maybe the next one's 15. I uh, didn't get to talk enough about uh, lighting, but I think we ended up in a pretty good spot. Let me know your thoughts below. Uh, let me know if you like my color choices uh, and what you would change about this rendered. Okay, so let's again look at the original. I'm just gonna go back to the homepage here in the new, what's new area. Certainly love um, uh, the the color choices here that Dan made over mine. I'm realizing this this one's like a lot lower in the frame and we can make some better co like composition choices, I think. This one's still a little too dark for me, but that's what we got. So let's open up uh, Dan's original scene file, or I should say like final scene file. This is what he sent me. Um, and I'm opening this for the first time here. And let's just see, uh, what it is. First of all, I see that he did use the um, denoiser. Let's see which one he used. So let's go uh, into sampling, denoising, same one. Looks like the same settings. These are the default settings. So it looks like Dan's been also playing with um, the denoising here. And let's just see what this whole scene is. Uh, let's just move away from the camera and we have, you know, roughly a, a, the same kind of composition here. Mine were a little closer together. Um, so it looks like he has a, a little bit more separation on his setup. Um, and then let's look at the same thing. So he did have instances, so he did place it in a similar way. Uh, let's look at the lighting. Okay, so he's actually has a HDRI light with a HDRI link on it. Let's see what HDRI he picked. So he has concrete office outside and he has a reflection, um, looks like a light that is used um, maybe only for reflection. Let's see, if we go into details. Yeah, you can see this light. Uh, okay, so let's just go through them each one. Um, let's turn off the other ones. And this is only the HDRI light, okay? Um, and again, this is the, what do we call it? Concrete office outside. And it's just at a regular exposure and it is doing most of the lighting. Let's just turn it off. Let's turn on this reflection and check this out. So he's got a, looks like a soft box or, you know, redshift area light um, that is only affecting reflection. So this is the one that uh, he, he turned the camera and diffuse off. So if you turn the diffuse on, it's gonna actually light the scene. That looks pretty good too but he pulled that out because it, it looks like all he wanted was this reflection kind of add these glints to here and, and here. And because it's all glass, you also get all this transparency here. So um, so that's the reflection light. And then let, let's look at this uh, redshift skylight as well. So it looks like the sky might be almost like a fill light. Um, let's look at some of the settings in here. Uh, it's got a sun and a skylight and you can see the settings here. Um, nothing too crazy, it just adds this nice little blue tone. And if we zoom out, um, you can see there's also this nice white background. So let's see if there's material on this background. Um, looks like he used a marble for the, for the floor. Uh, I didn't change it from the concrete in mine, but that's okay. Uh, and then let's actually see which ones he picked. He picked lavender, lemonade, he did go with lemonade, wild rice, sea, uh, sea bucket, okay, Santa Fe, Rhino, uh, and then lead glass. So the beautiful little choices here. Um, 
I think the thing that I learned opening this is is this trick. I don't I haven't really used this trick like using a light only for reflection. I mean, look at that. Like that is just purely only reflection here. Ooh, and I didn't turn off the redshift sun. So look. Um I I messed that up earlier. This is all that reflection is doing. Just this glint and nothing else. So we, I I accidentally had this redshift sun on. So I apologize. That's all this was doing. This is what I'm learning by by looking at a Zuko scene file. Uh, I, I I should have said as well. If you want this scene file, if you want to look through this, um, learn some tips and tricks, some render settings from a great artist like Dan. You can go grab this uh, if you're a Plus member. They're in the resources channel. We have this and many other scenes that you could use in production. So you could literally open this up, replace the glasses with something that you're working on. Or if you've always wanted to see how people organize their projects and just kind of see some of these settings like I'm doing, you could do the same. So I'd say my biggest thing is this reflection light. That's my biggest takeaway. Um, and also using the sky and sun. I'm going to ask him next time I see him um, what this is all about when he uses sky and sun versus using an HDRI and, and what uh, the pros and cons would be on that. So if you have a question uh, uh, for Dan or if you want me to ask him or anything else about this, uh, project, please leave it down below. And what do you think? Uh, I feel like I've been wanting to play more in cinema and honestly haven't had a lot of time. I, I feel like these 10 minute projects might be a way for me to pop on the camera, play around, and hopefully learn a little something. Uh, that's been my goal. And hopefully if you're learning along in the, in the process, I'd love that too. So let me know down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always for being a, a great Skull Gorilla Plus member, and we will see you in another video really soon. Miss you guys. Bye, everybody.